Hi, I'm Melissa. And then I'm Mel. Girl, let me tell you, I only had maybe a little less than half of that drink. When you're drinking, you just gotta drink more. <laughs> I am a strongly worded email. Actually, that feels in line, though. That is not that true. Is, no, listen, and every now and again, when somebody get out of line, you just yell, pop the truck. <laughs> I'm the juice to her gin. Did we hit record? Is it working? Is it on? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gin and Juice podcast. I am Melissa. And I am Mel. So we are the Gin and Juice podcast. Uh, we are real life sisters and we get on here every single week in your podcast feed to talk about everything and nothing at all. We are in separate places because if you're a part of the Kevin Stage universe, you know that during the summer, uh, a lot of us actually travel and do a lot of different things in different places. So most of the summer we will be virtual. Um, so yeah, that's just what it is. So we always start with a segment that we call Long Story Short, where we give you kind of life updates what's been going on since the last time we talked. So Mel, what's been going on with you? Um, I feel like you have more exciting updates happening. I, d I haven't been, I went to Angel and Marcus's um, podcast uh, their tour stop, which was a ton of fun. It was amazing. It was blown. I mean, blown out. It was, uh, well, blown out, but it was also sold out. Uh, so seeing that was really dope and meeting a bunch of the stage crew was really cool. Got to, to say hello to some folks. And yeah, it's been a bit of a chill-ish week, I would say. Oh, really? It's because it, we're gone? Do you miss us? Absolutely. That is why. It's also the start of, <laughs> yes. Also, it's the start of summer, so and we have plans coming up. So I just I've been trying to prepare, I think, for like what's coming, which just requires oh. shopping and finding outfits and like doing all that stuff. Oh, do you want to tell the people what you're doing? For life? <laughs> yeah, like you're going you're doing a photo shoot. Oh. I'm doing a photo shoot, so I have to get some pictures for, I mean, some outfits for that. The kids are going to Atlanta, so I have to get them, like, socks and underwear and pajamas, things, necessities that they'll need for that. Uh, we're going to go to Essence. We'll meet y'all in New Orleans for, for Essence. Uh, we're also going to do Mexico. So it's just a lot of planning for all of that. I also really want to purge really badly. I just want to like throw a bunch of stuff away, but I can't do that when my children are here. So I'm looking forward to them being gone for like, if I could just get a week and I'm just going to throw everything away. Well, man, the summer is the best time to do that. When you just said, um, buy socks and underwear, uh, and purging, I'm very happy for you actually, because every summer I buy my kids new underwear and new socks, but I never would throw away the old so uh -oh. one day their stuff was just like overflowing and I very much have a throwaway spirit anyway. And I was just like, I'm going to lose my mind. You guys have so much junk in here and I'm just like tossing and throwing everything yeah. away. So I'm very intentional about like throwing it away first and then buying or buying and throwing away. So I'm not like just building on top of it because junk builds up quickly with kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. I usually, when McKinley goes, we haven't, Makaya hasn't gone for like the summer. It'll be her first time going to Atlanta for the summer. But usually when McK McKinley goes, I like redo her room. I throw away everything. She comes back to a redecorated, like it's a whole thing. But it's just, it feels like it's been a continuous, like I haven't had that break yet. So it's coming and I'm excited to throw everything away. Man, me too. I love throwing things away. It's one of my favorite activities. It's like one of my favorite pastimes is throwing things away. Greg comes to the house. If he something, he will literally send a text within three minutes. Melissa, I left this. Do not throw it away. Do not throw do it away. He does. Do he does not throw it away. Everything out away. I, Find a place. Is, one of my, yeah. If especially if I feel like it's out of place, oh, I'm throwing it in the trash immediately. Like I'm immediately throwing it in the trash. Um, okay, so what about me? So I spoke at the Momscape uh, 2023. I think this is her second or third year doing it. Her name is Jamika Craddock. She's actually in my book club that doesn't exist. Uh, if oh. I had a book club, she would be a boo in that book oh, club, I but I don't have a book club. Of course, she's not. Yeah. Um, so she, oh, thank you, Kat. I meant to write it down and I didn't. Mel went viral on TikTok. 
No, that's I have it for Black Twitter Trends slash YSL. Oh. I, know I was going to talk about. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't see your updates, but that was like totally a thing I wanted to talk about. I'm happy she said that. Okay, we'll leave it. So I spoke at that. It was a lot of a lot a lot a lot of um, fun. I felt. Um, really good about it, which if you know me in true Melissa fashion, I never feel good about things that I do, but like, I felt really, really good about that. And so that was a good it's time. The mom friend, say the name again. Uh, it's called the mom skate. Mom, mom skate. Sorry. Um, and your yeah, topic so was. It's an escape for women that she hosts and they, it was actually a lot of fun. She had like some really cute games and like things. Um, and my topic was uh, developing a healthy relationship with self. Mm. yeah and so um just really really good i think i had like 40 40 minutes to 45 minutes to speak or something like that and i always um i always over prepare always thinking that i'm only going to talk for like 20 minutes and then i uh can easily go an hour and so it was just really a good time. That's so funny. I want all the book club members to know that aren't book club members that Catherine. Wait, hold on. Let me interrupt you because here's what I want y'all to know. That FaceTime call that you hear is Angel Sun Sai calling McKinley. <gasps> That's hilarious. And what happens is anytime I be like, go away, decline. He just calls back, calls but back. also she does the same thing to him. They just like blow each other's phones up. And I'd be like, sorry, that is go ahead. Uh, Catherine put the link into the chat, not me. Cause I didn't mention that it even exists actually. So I just want to make that abundantly clear. Yes. Um, for all of you that are wondering and you want to join the book club, there will be a link in the description box that I that doesn't exist so do not join because we actually don't read books Mel is in it as well by being a member I mean she's actually not a member so anyway wow. that is what happened in Atlanta uh we also bought flights to go to game three of the finals uh yeah. with the um it was the Miami's heat and the and Denver the Nuggets. Nuggets yeah the Denver yeah. Nuggets and the Miami heat uh we almost missed it yeah, we almost oh, that's missed it. Right. Yeah, our flight was delayed like five hours. And why? So Did they say why? It all they always say is like electrical issues. But what was pissing us off was that like the flights that were departing after us were leaving. So all the flights uh, that were headed to Miami after us left. Yeah. And kept bought because you know at this point we're like oh my god we cannot miss this it was like so freaking expensive so we're like we're gonna buy another flight but then it ended up being too far we weren't gonna make it and if our flight left on time we would have missed both essentially yeah and so we waited but then our they were like your flight's gonna leave on time they reboarded us and then it still didn't leave for like another hour an hour and Wait, a half so probably. The the five hour delay you guys were at the hospital I mean at the hospital at the airport the whole time waiting for it. We were boarded for most of that. Oh, I thought that maybe they alerted y'all before you even left to the airport. Oh, no. that's the worst. That's the worst. Yeah, it was the it was the absolute absolute worst. Uh, but we did end up making it. We did end up missing like the first quarter, most of the first quarter. Um, but we saw the rest of the game, and it was it was a lot of fun. Like I want to go to like um, what's the NFL version? The, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah, I absolutely want to go to like another. It was one of my 44 40s was sounding like um, to go to like big major sporting events. And mm -hmm. so it was a lot of fun. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, also, quickly, oh, yeah, go I ahead. was going to just quickly say um, one of the other things that is a lot of fun is cooking and using HelloFresh to do so. To do yes. Yes. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. This summer, HelloFresh is here to take the work out of eating well. Reach your goals with deli delicious, calorie smart, and protein smart lunch and dinner options, plus new vegan recipes too. And you don't even have to be vegan to eat vegan. Because the food is just that good. 
<laughs> I've enjoyed actually ordering a few vegan recipes just because I'm like, sometimes I, I want to act like I am. Uh, but like I said, the food is still good. So, so you can do that. Uh, Hello Fresh Market has new snacks, meals, and more. Uh, to add on to your weekly order, like their fun s'mores bundles for the kids. I saw some of these um, new things that they have, some markets and snacks. They had I, I had a like a fried rice meal, I think, and I ordered Ooh. some egg rolls on the side. It was very nice. Um, so, yeah, those are really cool. Uh, this summer, spend less time meal planning and prepping with HelloFresh pre-proportioned ingredients that make it easy to get cooking quick. We recently ate the, um, what was it? It was the, I'm gonna find it. Cause it was so meatloaves, meatloaf with creamy mushroom sauce fire. It was the sauce mm, that sounds good. was amazing. And then it was with some mashed potato. We had a good time. We all enjoyed it. I am a fan of HelloFresh and you should be one too. Go to HelloFresh.com slash juice 16 and use code juice 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash juice 16 and use code juice 16 for 16 free meals plus shipping. Uh, it's America's number one meal kit. All right finish your story um oh i wanted to say this mel we broke the internet a little bit talking about sitting in the shower i didn't oh realize how uncommon that was me too i did i either. was like my what, mind was blown like, yes when we were at angel and mark's show um i met this lovely set of um sisters and she was like i'm the gin i'm the juice and it was great and then at the end she was like I don't know about that sending the shower stuff. I don't know what y'all got. You know, we don't do that. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> the thing about it is I have questions for y'all because they're like, girl, why would you sit on the bathroom floor? It's my shower. It's clean. It's not like I'm doing it in the hotel bathroom. That's gross. Okay, I get it. But girl, if you clean your shower, you know it's clean. You could sit down in the shower in your own bathroom. Yes, it's fine. Y'all got to try and it. You have to try it. Try it. It's so relaxing. She said we're a while for that. <laughs> what you have to do is plan your time accordingly, okay? If you only have 15 minutes to get dressed in total, then obviously you don't have time to sit in the shower. But I usually give myself an hour and a half to two hours to get dressed for real, for real. I have plenty of time to sit in the shower. Absolutely. Plenty. Absolutely. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> It is. I just didn't realize how many people were saying no. All everybody in the comments, and I know y'all gonna roast this again. Everybody was like, "Girl, absolutely not." Just <laughs> no. My answer is no. My answer is no. I just think that is so funny. Um, exactly. And I think that's it for. Um, oh, my last thing is Miami is is not as warm as we want it to be, and I want people to know that every time it I go to Miami. No, because every time I go to Miami, I'm always like, oh, I need to bring shorts and tank tops and da da da. It rains every single time I'm in Miami. Yeah, but isn't it warm rain? It's humid yeah, and rainy. My, that's my oh, favorite I kind of rain. It. And it yeah. pours down. Yes, that's the best part. <laughs> a was summer like, thunderstorm, a summer rain shower. Oh, I when you're it. on vacation, though? Yes. I enjoy no, that. No. I want, I be acting like I'm in a movie. Let's go out and dance in the dang on rain. And the best part is that it's warm. When it's raining oh. and it's cold, like nobody has time for that. But raining on a summer, sunny, it's humid, and you could just be out and careless because your hair is braided. It's the best. You got your oh, vacation no. wet and wavy going. It's the best. I cannot. I was like, this is so dumb. I will say this, Mel. Oh my God, you're going to love this. And we met to get video and we didn't. Why were we near the cheer Daytona stage? Oh, that's really cool. You, yes. You know where, um, so in the, the last season we just watched, or and actually we may have watched them out of order. So it may have actually been the first season because I think we watched the newest season first and then went back and watched the first season. Anyway, when that kid got um, hurt during yes. Daytona and they yep. went under that archway. Yeah. We saw it. Oh, yes. Wait, why? Why were y'all there? We were, Where was it? We were in Daytona going to Bethune Cookman. I know, but like, where is that 
at? Is it just out in Outside the open? Outside the it's... hotel we were at. It's on the oh, beach, got it, got it. basically. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we got can it. Okay. see it outside of, the, outside of our hotel. Oh. But Kev said when we walked in, Kev was like, this looks like cheer. And I was like, I mean, I wasn't getting it at all. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know. And Kev is also real good at like Daytona, cheer. Therefore, we must, those two oh. things must be where we are because that's the only connection yeah. I make. So I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. We walked outside. I said, Kev, it is. And we ah! saw that this way. Oh, oh yeah. My God. We were That's so, I was like, cool. no, we were legit excited. Actually, the only reason we didn't get a picture because it was freaking raining and it was a lightning and thunderstorm. Well. <laughs> That's really We were cool. at the same hotel as the, um, the Nuggets were staying with us. We saw. Did you guys? Steven yeah. Smith. You... Steven Smith? What? Who? Stephen A. Smith. Uh-huh. The, the, we saw him. We saw, uh, I don't know if it's Derek Jeter or who was the one that was engaged to J-Lo? Oh, I can't remember his name. The A-Rod. Okay. I don't know if it was Alex Rodriguez or Derek Jeter because they low-key be the same person to me a little bit sometimes. A little bit they are. Yeah. So I don't know who it was, but one of them was there with Stephen yeah. A. Smith. We saw a couple oh, basketball cool. players. Yeah, it was a good Did time. Did you guys see girls with BBLs? Huh? Did you see girls with like BBLs, like the thoughts were trying to wait at the host I mean at the hotel room doors? No. I'm gonna oh, tell you what, you. one of the waiters was like, uh actually he told Kev this. He knew the Nuggets were going to win because they didn't have women, women all up and through. They weren't hanging out. Like oh. they were on chill mode. Oh, did they win? I haven't been keeping up with the championship. Yeah, they did. They, they oh. it just ended last night. The Nuggets won. Oh, that's amazing for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was if Kev said it was uh Derek Jeter, then it was Derek Jeter girl. I don't like I said, it was one of the two. Don't give me the lion. If Kev Hilarious. said it was Derek, it was Derek. Uh, okay. Next, let's go to um oh. Let's go to pop the trunk. I'll go to it. Couple things. Okay. I'm in Atlanta for the mom conference, actually. I order food. I'm a woman. I'm by myself. So I tell, I don't want to go downstairs because it's late, but I also don't want my uh, delivery driver to know I'm in my hotel room by myself. So I okay. say, can you drop my food off? in front of my door and he's like okay i'm standing at your door and i'm like okay great uh my husband and i are coming we'll just grab it when we approach the hotel you can leave it mind you i'm in the hotel i just don't want him to know i'm in the hotel okay. by myself. I was about to okay yeah so i'm like yeah i'll me and my husband will just grab it later you can leave it he walks away i wait like five ten minutes i open the door why is my food not there wait at i have all. to I have Wait, I have, I have to recap. Sorry, you told him to leave it in front of your door, your hotel door yes. room. Yes. Okay. He, What's okay. your question? No, keep going. So, how, because he was gonna go into the hotel room, yes. make, so he find out. I mean, into the uh huh. So he te well, okay. You you have a different issue. So let me set it up. When I am traveling by myself. And yes. I order food. I don't want to go to, and it was late. It was actually really late. I didn't want to go downstairs to the lobby. That's just because I'm being late. Okay. That's right. what I needed. So I tell the Uber, the delivery each driver to drop, this is my room number. Can you leave it in front oh. of my door? Okay. Okay. Because uh, yeah. I don't want, listen, Uber drivers can be any and everybody. I don't want you to know that I'm a woman in my hotel room Got by it. myself. I wait five or 10 minutes, Robin, because- uh, I want to make sure he's gone. Yeah. It's probably just my paranoia, but as a single woman in the hotel, I don't want nobody to know or think I'm in here by myself because what if you come back? I don't know. All I'm saying is yeah. I don't know. If so okay. maybe I'm being over paranoid. And five, 10 minutes probably is dramatic. It was probably more like three to five minutes. So, yes. and I'm listening, you know what I mean? I'm like making sure, okay, yeah. he's, because literally he texts me and he's like, uh, uh, I'm outside of your door. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. My husband and I will come grab it. You can just leave it. Okay. Don't don't worry about where I am. You just yeah, leave yeah. my food. Just leave the I'll wait okay. a few minutes. 
I open the door, the food is gone. I look up and down the hallway, the food is gone. When I tell you, I text Danny, I said, I am so pissed because you know what happens when you travel all day. Yeah, you get to the hotel room, you shower. Okay. I had to prep for my stuff, so I um I was uh uh steaming my clothes, I was going over my notes. So when the food comes, all I want to do is sit down in my bed and eat and, my food yeah. because it's 11 o'clock at night, 10 11 o'clock at night. I've been traveled, I done did everything. All I want to do is sit in my bed and eat. This man took my food. So that's what I was going to say. Who you think took it? You think the driver took it? He never brought it? or it. I don't think he ever. I think he was in front of the thing because what happens is I be, listen, when I'm by myself, I'm a whole 10-year-old child. When your mama told you, don't answer the phone, don't answer the door. Yes. So as soon as I hear, I be like, let me text you quietly. Yeah. Yes, I don't want is. you to know I'm here. I don't want you to know nothing about my life. Okay. I don't want you to know nothing about my life. So when he says, Oh, I'm in front of your door. I'm on my way. Like literally. So I think he, I don't think it was too late at night for someone else to take it. I mean, maybe someone else took it. I personally think at 10 and 11 o'clock, people aren't walking up and through the hallways of a hotel room. Do you think you, you said you think you heard him at the door? Yes. Oh, okay. Here, here's only all of my questions. Absolutely, that is a pop of the trunk. Here's my question, though. I've never had an Uber person when I'm in a hotel. I always make them leave it at the lobby. I didn't even know it was an option for them to leave it at your door. So I was thinking he left it at the lobby. But you're, if you heard him at your door, he just he took. Yeah, he, yeah, there was yeah. no picture. Don't no. they take? He didn't. Take, no, no. I looked for that too. Cause I was like, maybe he looking at a different door. No, he took that. Yeah. So what happens is because it's so, um, two things, because it's so late, it's 10 and I was doing stuff. If I was yeah, just yeah, chilling yeah. in the bed, maybe I will just take my butt downstairs, but I'm prepping my notes. I'm taking a shower. Ooh. I'm, uh, getting my outfits ready. Like I'm doing things. I'm yeah, just yeah. like, thing, you know, whatever you can come up here. Um, but then I also go like overly cautious and I'm like, don't know I'm in here by myself. Yeah, yeah. No, I just didn't know it was a thing. I'm going to have do it next time. Well, <laughs> only do door. it if you feel comfortable answering the door. Because I'd be like, well, don't do don't, it I'm not answering the door. I'm not answering the door. <laughs> I'm not answering the door. I'm so sorry. You're going to have to leave it. I'm not answering the door. Um, okay, so that was the first thing. Second thing that I need to pop the trunk on is this. When did the world decide that salmon that's not sushi has a temperature? What do you say more? Meaning, I'm going to say more. Meaning, when I order my dinner and I order salmon and the waiter says, how would you like that cooked? Oh. If it's not sushi, I want it well done every time. I don't understand that either. And I don't even I don't like understand the same. when it became a thing. Same. Like, same. I just, I don't, I don't, I told Danny, I said, I... Salmon should not be. I don't like my steak well done. Hello, Mel does. I didn't know this was a thing until I feel like within like the last, I don't know, maybe five years or so, people suddenly started asking you like, "How do you want your salmon cooked?" I just thought it was assumed it was well. I don't yeah, yeah. know. Danny, I was telling Danny, I said, I need you to talk to all the chefs in the world. And if I'm not ordering sushi, I want it well done. She was like, girls, the only way to eat salmon is medium. And I was like, no. Medium? So like yes. some of it's wrong, some of it. Yes. And it has that like gooey center. I don't like that. I don't really like I don't salmon. Either. But... I just didn't know. I li Listen, let me see. I just didn't know it was a thing. Like, I know it's a thing because it's been going on for the yeah. past five years, but I'm also like, when did this become a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did we all decide that we should do it like this? Yes! I feel like I wasn't part of the memo. It just like, all of a sudden, that was a thing. She said, like, I'm so, and it was in Atlanta. She said, y'all be like, you know. I said, because if I wanted sushi, I just would have ordered that. She said, you overcook yours like mine. <laughs> oh my god 
I said, dry my salmon out. She said, salmon is supposed to be medium rare to medium. Ew. Ew. I don't I'm like not, it like that. I don't either. Wait, I you don't, don't like even it. like salmon? Though. I was got no, I don't. And with the other day we we were at wherever we were and I ordered salmon and I didn't eat it while we were at the restaurant and I took it home. And the next day I was like, I don't like this. I don't know why I ordered this. I don't like salmon. I don't know why I thought I should order salmon. It's not good. Oh my God. I, I don't, I just don't understand when we made it a thing. I was surprised you don't like salmon having grown up in the Pacific Northwest. That's like totally a thing. I didn't like the Pacific Northwest either. Hello. Uh, I, how do you like your steak? Listen, y'all can say what y'all want in the comments. I don't care. I like my steak well done. I don't like red. I don't like pink. I like my food cooked. Judge me. I don't care. Cook my food all the way. I am a, we are a medium well family. Medium plus to medium well family. I don't like mine too, uh, when it's not cooked all the way, people call it juice. It just feels chewy to me. Yes. It's not my thing personally, but I can do a medium plus to medium well. Mm. I can do a medium plus to medium well. But I also I'm like mad. what? Go ahead. I also like my when people boil eggs and it'd be like yell gooey in there in the center, oh. like a boiled egg. I don't like that either. Cook I everything. Like I like my eggs scrambled hard. I like my boiled eggs boiled hard. No, no like your eggs scrambled burned. Well, huh? You like your eggs scrambled burned. I and and do, and do. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, no, 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 ma'am. I didn't make that up. Medium plus is totally a thing. Ask your waiter. Actually, that's where I got it from. Uh, I got it from a waiter. If you ask your, um, if you ask your. Wait, normally what we do, this is what you have to do, Mel. Normally what we do is we'll say, does your chef cook like perfectly to temperature or do they tend to overcook or undercook? Because what you'll know is sometimes you can order medium well and chefs be like, that's too dry. You know, chefs be doing their own thing and they'll undercook it. Mm -hmm. Or you have some chefs that are like, uh, if you want it medium well, that means you want it burned. I'm going to dry it out and like piss you off. So I've learned that medium plus low key. Thank you, ma'am. Medium plus is totally a thing. And we <laughs> order it um, uh, all the time, actually. Low key, medium plus, low key be the way to go. Because sometimes you do medium well, and then it be dry because they go yeah. too far. And medium be too, I can't do it. That medium plus be be perfect. Yeah. When it's uh, dry, you ask for ketchup. It's fine. You put ketchup on steak? I'm just, I, I like did, I would I was being funny about ketchup, but I have. But also, if you just get a sauce, it's fine. You get a little topping, and it'll be all right. At least your Do food you, is good. Uh, yeah, but Mel, you have gotten a dry steak and been disappointed, have you not? Yes. What, because when it's, like, dry, it's like, okay, y'all are being annoying. But when you have a sauce or, like, a topping, you can put it on, on top of it, and it's fine. Mm. I'd rather that than having it not cooked and red and pink. I ain't got time for that. I don't like ketchup at all, so I'm not even the right person to ask. I just, I literally don't like don't ketchup. Me. I don't care. I, I don't care. <laughs> ah! uh, do you want to talk about Double Fine? Yes, let's talk about Double Fine. If you uh, have ever wondered where video games come from or how they are made, then... Double Fine Psych Odyssey is the documentary for you. It is on YouTube right now. It is, uh, I think it's 32 episodes, 32 or 37. Um, but it basically uh, goes through the creation of this video game. But the, the team, um, the company behind it and the team behind it, they documented seven years of them going through the process. And so even like the fun moments, the kind of casual moments, them in the office, uh, the CEO initially like was making the desks for his employees. So like that's captured. 
He also like painted them. Um, so you kind of get like a behind the scenes inside look at that process. There's also a little bit of drama as you keep going. Episode like 17, I think, is when uh, there's some tea dropped in there. So it's kind of an up and down roller coaster um, and like a fun inside look um, at this company and their journey um, to creating this really dope uh, video game. So you can watch the entire series with for free with no ads right now in 4K with real captions made by a human. Go to doublefine.com slash GJ. GJ. To start your psych odyssey. That is doublefine.com slash GJ. GJ. To start your psych odyssey. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I like my eggs cooked well. But I also, also like my fluffy. Yeah, because it makes it fluffy. You don't like fluffy eggs? Actually, I don't mind your eggs. I don't put milk in mine though. I don't yeah, I don't mind milk with water in there. And it actually I, I actually don't like it with water. Water I actually feels like it, it makes your eggs tough, to be honest. But when you add milk, it makes it fluffy and like like they're happy. Fluffy eggs reminds me of IHOP and in and I just don't believe IHOP has real eggs back there. So it, fluffy eggs reminds me of like not real eggs. And so that's why I'm like, I want something real. But when you have milk in your eggs, your eggs don't, you feel like your eggs are like, good morning. How are you? I'm here to get your day started. Give you some protein, some nutrients. Mm -mm. Mustard. Have you ever added mustard to eggs? I haven't. What does mustard do? That doesn't sound like that's actually. But what does it do? You, when you make deviled eggs, you put mustard in there. Is that the vibe? I haven't heard of, of mustard with eggs. This is so interesting. Well, I wonder what flavor. Does it make it tart? Okay. Turns out the Dijon mustard, besides being delicious, contains two very interesting things for your eggs. Fat and acid. It adds more flavor and makes your eggs more decadent. I'm not a decadent girl. I might try it. I might try it. I I'm always willing to try something more. You know, you guys know I love to make breakfast. <laughs> yes, you do. I make breakfast almost every weekend, actually. Hilarious. If I'm at home, I'm probably making breakfast on the weekend. Okay, anything else in that section, ma'am? Uh, no. You have a daycare story in here. Oh, that was from um, the submitted pop the trunks. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, last thing on hotels. This is my last thing. This is my last thing. This is my last thing. I hate when you go to a hotel and you get off the elevator and they don't have a sign immediately wow, as to which to direction to go. Yeah. This way is rooms one through 10. This way is rooms 11 through 20. If that um, is not there, pisses me off to what, you're, no end. Are hotels still doing, not having that? The hotel we were just at in Daytona did not have that. Oh my gosh. Why? Yeah, yeah, that's why not would okay. You not? Oh my God, it drives me insane. I don't understand why I have to look, because you have to do, you have to go to at least two rooms to figure it out, because you need to find out, are these going up or are these going yeah, down? Yeah. So right, I have right, to look right. at it and don't this, don't let the middle portion be a divide. So that means I have to cross this over, go to one and then go further down to this one and don't be on the wrong side. That means you have to backtrack and go the other way. I have all of these bags like, girl, just put a placard right here. Say left yes. one through 10, right? 11 through 20. Yes. <laughs> it's not that I difficult. Heard. It's not it's that really hard. Not. I don't even require much of hotels, but please put a freaking placard up to tell me which direction to go to. Yeah, that's really stupid. That is annoying. Oh. That also reminds me, unrelated, but kind of related. People on Twitter always say that they don't like Atlanta's airport. And I'm just here to say that I think Atlanta has one of the best airports ever. You I don't like it? I hate, so wait, but what do you mean? Okay, let's describe what we mean by the best. Okay, let's give let's give context to this description because there okay. are some things that I like about it. There's some things that I hate. Even outside, sorry, that was my child screaming. 
even outside of the fact that it's the busiest airport, I think it just got ranked again as like, I don't, is it the country or the world? Uh, country, maybe. I think it might be, hold on. I think it's the world too. It might be the world. I think it is. The world's busiest airport. Yes. Literally, I think it is. Even outside is. of that, okay, and the fact that they can handle all of that traffic. I think that the signs are very clear. I think it has really great food options. I do like the food options. Their food options are great. The, now, listen, it's in Atlanta, so, like, you're not going to have great customer service. But that yes. has nothing to do with, like, the actual structure and no, navigating no. navigating no. the airport. Yes. I think navigating the signs allow you to navigate the airport really well and very easily. Melanie, I'm going to tell you why the people help make the experience good or bad. Because when I was just in Atlanta, guess where I went? To the clear line. And guess who was there? No one. Oh, so you well. know what I had to do? Go from the south side to the north side or whatever side is the delta side and go to that line. And I was like, what? If you have if you have two sides, right? If you have two sides, and this is the clear side for this side, and this is the clear side for this side. Why don't you have employees at the clear side on this side? Why I gotta go on this side? But you told me to come on this side because that's where I had to check in and do all my stuff, only to then walk back to this side. She probably was just in the restroom. You should have gave her some more time. She probably was coming back. <laughs> oh my god, I can't stand it. However, if I and I tell Kevin this all the time, if I have to have a layover. I you rather Atlanta. Atlanta. I rather be in they Atlanta. They got shops are their shops are good. Their delta, their yeah. south side, the Delta side is amazing. It's the best. It's the best airport. No. If I if I am going to the airport, I want it to be a regional airport. If I have a layover, I want it to be an internet. I want it to be Atlanta. I want it to be a big airport because I want all the options. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I'm flying out, give me Fayetteville. Give me Burbank. Burbank is amazing. Listen, Burbank. listen, give me one of them little bitty airports oh, to check I in. Know. I get through security, check my bag. All You can make it on all in five minutes. Yes. The best. That's for sure. The best. For real. Okay. So that's that. Although that did just happen to me in Atlanta. Legit. <laughs> I believe it. I, I believe so it. Bad. I was like, girl. Well, I have to come all the way over here. Then you check in on that side. And of course, your gate is still on the other side on because other side. Atlanta is still Delta and everything else. Yeah. So I was like, this is so dumb. They all hate being there. All the Atlanta employees be like, what, girl? You're like, oh, good morning. I know. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Oh, I right. hate LA. I hate. Somebody said, y'all got LAX. Just appreciate what you can because ain't nothing. I hate the LAX no, airport. LAX airport. I hate pulling up to the airport. I hate the drive to the airport. I hate ha I hate everything about LAX, LAX airport. For it to be as massive as it is in this, it's entirely too busy for yeah. it to be structured the way it is, confusing and no, stupid. The, the roundabout thing oh. is stupid. I hate it. I hate it. The, everything about it is just it, it dumb it's very yeah. dumb i hate it it's very dumb and they're always do although the southwest side is that the first terminal is looking real nice though i don't even understand their terminals they're like what when the uber people come pick you up which terminal i don't know why why would it be terminals and not like delta like if i don't know which one corresponds with with what i don't know oh. i don't care to learn. i don't care to learn yeah LX is trash, trash, but I like Atlanta, PFW too. I don't remember that one. You know, which one is like very aesthetic. I think it's Detroit or Minneapolis, somewhere in the Midwest. One of it's just a really nice, like, this is so nice. I can't remember where it is, but I feel like it's somewhere in the Midwest we went to. And I was like, this is really nice. Just like super aesthetic. Um, okay, moving on to um, oh, your part. Your Mel takes okay, talk about it. Mel, Mel takes not TV. I just want you to get to you going viral, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a mix, okay. Um, so after a lot of 
Um, I won't say harassment because I don't want it to be her, uh, sound Maybe. like that. But yes. uh, a lot of y'all in the comments and encouragement, in mental encouragement. Absolutely. And in particular, Catherine, amen, uh, Kat has been telling me to do TikTok videos reviewing the trials and the cases that I talk about on Gin and Juice for the longest time. She tweets me, Instagram DMs me, and TikToks me. And so I had been trying to figure it out and saying I was going to do it. And then last week, Melissa was like, hey, here's a video of, of a video. Uh, here is an example of a video you should do. Here's how you sent me a voice note. Do it like this, 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 and this. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. And I did it. And that thing went to 5 million views. Is it really? Five, it hit over five yesterday. That's amazing. Actually, and actually, hold on. Because the first one I did was the Travis Rudolph case. I did that one, and that one hit a million. It hit over a million. And then mm -hmm. I did the Young Melly case, which is up now, and it hit over 5 million. And I did um, another one last night because the trial started. And that one hit over a million in one day, over tw less than 24 hours, because I posted it last night and it's already at a million. Um, so anyway, this is like a thing that I'm doing now where I how am. How do you feel about it? How, do you, how are you feeling about like the visibility, knowing that many I eyes? Like, how are you I about hate it? it. I hate okay. everything about it. OK, I although I'm trying to tweak what is the right way to do them, because I don't want people in the comments like TikTok is an interesting place. OK, yeah. I, the, t the Travis Rudolph one that I posted was all about Travis. And this girl commented and said that I did my makeup wrong. And I was yeah. like, that's what you got out of this video. And then I'm covering the YNW Melly and I'll tell you guys what is happening in that case. But I'm covering the YNW Melly one. And this um, this guy said, you need to take this video down because you're reminding the police of all the evidence they have. And I was like. That's that's not how that works. I don't I'm not reminding them, sir. I'm literally not reminding them. And then yesterday, this guy sent me a DM and he was like, I know you're not a lawyer, but like, can you look at my case? Because what? I'm really scared. And I was like, I'm literally not a lawyer. That's why at the beginning it says I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a I'm not, I'm literally not a lawyer. I can't literally help not a lawyer. <laughs> But today, from the video that I posted last night, there's been a lot of people saying, yo, you're the best one covering. Like, you make this so, you're so entertaining. This is really easy to understand. Like, I'm not going to watch. I'm just going to come to your page every day. And so they've literally already been messaging me today, like, yo, where's day two? And I was like, they're not done. It's, they're still in court. I mean, they're done now, but they're like, they're still in court. They're like, yo, we need, we need your day two. So that part is really, really cool. I get very... Um, nervous about like the idea that 5 million people have watched a video um, that I made and have seen my face is like very nerve wracking for me. I'm like, I should have did it like with a blank face or something. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's really cool. I'm going to keep going. This trial is going to be long though. So we'll see if I do it. I don't know if I'm going to do it every day, but I am planning to continue making them. Um, so if you are on TikTok, you can go follow my TikTok and get the recaps. Uh, my name is the same um, as like on my social, which is You've Got Mail. Um, so yeah, that's been interesting. Congratulations. I Thank am you. so happy and proud of you. I know you were super nervous about it. I think yes. half the time is is figuring out the method to do it. Yeah. And yeah. then once you find out like this works. Yeah. And it's, it's not a lot of production. Oh, it no. doesn't which is a plus like yeah. the the lower and I don't mean this in a negative way but the least amount of things you have to do to do it means yeah. the uh, the less amount of hurdles you have to overcome to get it done yeah yeah so yeah the fact that it, it's easy yeah and to um Kat's point I think when I before I made that first video I had like 11 or 1200 followers on TikTok. I also don't like promoted a lot, like whatever. I just was doing stuff. And now I have 44,000 followers on TikTok. Like literally really? people are like, you deserve a follow. I'm going to come back. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, 
I can't believe it. But to your point, it is like lower production. I am, even if I wasn't making videos, y'all know I'm going to watch the trial anyway. Like I am consuming it because this is what I enjoy consuming. Um, so making the videos. But to your point, I think what I'm also learning is that I don't want to... I, I don't know what's going to happen and I don't want to say what is going to happen. It's really just like, this is what I got out of today. These were like the high points. Um, so that's been really cool. And I think it gets better reception when I'm doing it that way. So anyway, it's been really interesting, but all of that to say, let me tell y'all what's happening in this case. So YW Melly um, is, his name is Jamel. Um, he is a rapper from Florida and in 2018, well, I should say in 2019, February 13th, 2019, he was arrested um, because police alleged that he killed two of his friends. So the alleged, what's being alleged by police is that on October 26th, Melly, his friend, um, his last name or his for, his name is Cortland Henry. So Melly, Cortland Henry, and then two other guys got in a vehicle, all four of them. And everybody, oh, actually, yes, before I, I should do it now. Actually, speaking of making things plain and teaching, uh, making things digestible, let's talk about Babel. So I mentioned at the top of the episode that we are talking about going to Mexico uh, the on stages and the you've got males <laughs> are talking about going uh, to Mexico. And when you go, the travel hack that you need is Babel, whether you're uh, or wherever you're going. We're just talking about Mexico, but wherever you're going, the travel hack that you need is Babel, whether you're a seasoned traveler or embarking on your on your first adventure communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture and that's where Babbel comes in Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions and thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination it is the summertime and tons of people do a lot of traveling and that's where Babbel can help you uh, learn a language. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Um, other language learning apps use AI, which has been a lot of talk recently, the talk of AI, and other learning apps use that for their lessons lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. So you get to learn from real people, not a computer. Right now, get up to 55 percent off of your subscription when you go to babble.com slash gj gj that's babble.com slash gj yep for up GJ. to <laughs> for up to 55 percent off your subscription babble language for life okay uh, okay, okay so back to it so basically what they're alleging happened is that on October 26, these four men get into a vehicle and um, young Melly, who is in the back of the vehicle, he is sitting behind the driver's side, um, turns and shoots these two other men. And they were his like best friends. He's known since like he was young. So he turns and shoots his two friends. The driver is still alive. Um, and then Melly is still alive. They then go to a kind of desolate area um, that has no street lights or whatever. And they get out and stage a drive-by. So they get out and shoot up the car on the right side of the car. Um, the window, windows are shattered. They also shoot um, a couple times from behind the vehicle. So the back windshield is um, shattered. From there, okay, police allege that YNW Melly gets out. Uh, he is dropped off. And he has a friend come and pick him up. And then um, Cortland Henry, who is the driver, continues on to a hospital and comes in and says that they've been victims of a drive-by shooting and his two friends are in the car dead. So that is what they're saying happens. What is what the problem is? Okay, he is charged with first degree, two counts of first degree murder, uh, YNW Melly and actually the driver. They're both charged with first degree murder. And uh, Cortland Henry is also charged with accessory. The problem with this case is that the state has to prove Melly did it, right? Like that is what they, that's the prosecution. They have to uh, prove that. 
Melly's team doesn't have to prove necessarily he doesn't he didn't do it. He just has to. Uh, they just have to prove that someone else could have done it. Have done it. And the issue with that is, if four people are in the car and two come out, it's a how. How do you know the other person didn't do it? And they don't have a motive, and they don't have a murder weapon, so they can't have a mm -hmm. weapon to test fingerprints. They don't have a motive to say this is why he would have done it. So it's really uh, a toss up. So. The um, prosecuting attorney, she said her goal, because so much of what she is um, using for this case is based off of YNW Melly's cell phone and the tracking and the data that came from that. She has to now prove that that is Melly's phone and he had it before, during and after the incident, the shooting. Um, so that is his goal. And um, court, I mean, uh, the, the YNW Melly's attorney is saying um, that the court, I mean, the, the police and the detectives did a bad job. They were sloppy and, and they identified Melly as the person who did this crime and they had tunnel vision and didn't entertain any other options. And he is saying, how do you, basically he's saying how, you know, Cortland Henry didn't do it. So that is basically what he's standing on for his defense. Um, and so it's been really fascinating. Today was day two. I've been tuned in because it's been very interesting. This is a jury case? Yes. And the thing about that, that's the other thing, which could be a trigger warning, let me just say, uh, or sensitive topic, but um, it is a jury case. And if convicted, Melly could be facing the death penalty. And the thing why that's even worth noting is because Florida just had a new law. The governor um, approved a new law, which is that um, previously all 12 jurors had to agree on the death penalty. So someone gets convicted and then all 12 have to agree on the sentence of the death penalty. If anyone does not agree, then they don't get it. And so um, after the Parkland shooting that happened, the Parkland school shooting that happened in Florida in 2018, the governor is the, uh, made the new law, which is now you don't need all 12, you only need eight out of 12. And that is because the jurors for that Parkland shooting all 12 couldn't agree that he should get the death penalty. Uh, and so he got a life sentence. So the judge was like, we going to change that. And so now only eight out of 12 and YNW Melly's case is one of the first cases to be under this new law. So anyway, that was a ton of stuff, but it has been very interesting to say the least. What is the makeup of the jury? Today, you know? the guy said, I think it's between like 30 and 40 year olds, but he didn't specify the race and we haven't seen them. We haven't seen what they look like. Um, but I think he said they're between like 30 year olds and 40 year olds. Mm, that I'm always curious with the makeup of the, the race, because that always plays a role. And we're going against uh, rappers and we're in the very conservative state of Florida. Like very, all of those yeah are very much like even when you're talking about reasonable doubt yes um, they 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 come in with reasonable doubt not because we doubt you did it but because we very reasonably believe you did so right. you're guilty right. until absolutely proven otherwise in our mind absolutely and that's like not work in their favor at all you know? yeah it's a lot well, congratulations. Uh, how do you feel about uh finding your niche in in this world of social media you know, I feel like um, it's it's along these lines, even if it's not this, amen, sure. I keep moving this, even if it's not this exactly, um, it does feel like this, it's around this area, which is very cool because I've always um, been interested in it just naturally. It's what I, I look into. Um, years ago, I don't even know if you're going to remember this, but I was thinking about this because um, I went to dinner with my friend Jessica, who I've known since like Cartoon Network days and like a long time ago. And her, and her and I have very, very similar interests when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, but years ago, when blogging first hit, we used to talk about doing like doing blogs. Her and I would do like a like an entertainment or like a crime blog. Um, and of course, it never happened. We were working at Cartoon Network and like living our life. Um, but anyway, when we went to dinner, she was like, do you remember that? We used to talk about that. And I was like, yo, we did. And like this feels like a return of like, yeah, this is the thing that I'm like interested in. So, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. We'll see. Well, congratulations. I'm happy and proud of you because those things can be very, um, it can be nerve wracking, but once you did it 
or once you do it and you find the rhythm with it, it does get like a heck of a lot easier. Like you're less anxious about it. You're less like I found my groove. The other thing I was going to suggest to you too, because it seems like you have a lot of this memorized. They have, um, I told Kev to use this too. It's almost like a teleprompter app. Oh, not necessarily so you can like read it, but maybe if you have key points, because I know yeah. people were nitpicking some of the things you were saying. So yeah. if you want it to write out like specific things you want to make sure you hit or facts that you want to make sure you get right, yeah. a teleprompter could be um, the teleprompter apps could be a good way to like record those notes. Oh, yeah, I'll do that for sure. Because um, this is the other thing I should say the video that hit 5 million I took down last night. Did you really? Why? Because it was too much. I know. Melanie, this is actually when when <laughs> when everyone says that you are Kev, I'd be like, but she is my sister still because it's overwhelming. And but I'm going to tell you this as an encouragement, because I know this is what I would do to myself. Don't self-sabotage yourself. The mm. comments will have you self-sabotage. Yeah. Tell them people, people, not only can they be mean, they can be nitpicky. They can focus on the wrong thing. It's part of the reason I shield myself, but don't allow, if it's at 5 million, girl, let that thing go and get out them comments, which I know is easier said than done. It took me years to get out. So I know what I'm saying is much easier said than done. But like, if I know part of the things was like, it was a this, it was a that, it was a, yeah. and you said this, and it was actually yeah. that. So I do it. But um, but again, the teleprompter app will like help you, well, help. you know, close. yeah, because yeah. sometimes you're talking fast, sometimes you don't even realize that's what you said. Like, yes. you go back and be like, I don't even know why I said that when I know what's this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hit it. It's it's not completely deleted, but I, I, I hit it from it's not public anymore. It's still I can make it unpublic, but uh, I did take away that on, on um. Almost like archive it like you can on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't decided if I'll, uh, because a few people were like, where's the, where did the video go? And I was like, away, girl. <laughs> but anyway. Well, it, it is yeah, good. you don't want to stop your progress either because if that's the 5 million one, that's the one that people are, are um, you know, the For You page is probably the one that they're pushing out and serving yeah. how people are finding you. And so yeah. you don't want to stop. It's just, and you will become, I know I'm all over the place. You guys know I enjoy doing this stuff. Mel was like, low key, you, and Danny says this too. Uh, what did it, what did I be saying I need to do sometimes? Social media coach? Yes, I need to be a, a yes. Because yes. if I could tell someone else to do the things that I don't want to do, but yes. I know are good ideas. Yes. I would be really they'd be good. good. They work. You have good ideas. I'd be having the I best do. ideas that I would never do. But what I was going to say is um, you don't want to suppress that growth because the wow. way all the algorithm works is once you are, um, once you kind of kick off, it's almost like momentum. And if you keep going on the momentum, it's it's easier to grow because the force is behind you. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Oh, sorry. I saw an email that said college assistance, actually from Catherine, but because it said hello list, I thought it was from an actual college. So I was oh. like, who at these colleges knows me like this informally? I was yeah, confused. Yeah. I don't know who this could be. Um, okay. Anyway, congratulations. That's what I wanted to say Thanks, is wow. congratulations on it. That's freaking fantastic. Awesome. And amazing. Um, anything else that we have for today? Did uh, you want to do a, for a, cause I know we had some from before. I uh, what? Some we didn't read last week. Pop the trunks. Oh yeah. But somebody gave me a good I idea actually. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to use an app to uh, condense the story. And, and so I am going to do that. So I don't want to do it today. I want to do it on the next one. Uh, I'll do the rest of the Oh, is like an AI app? Yes. Somebody DM me was I'm like, you can put the a thing in the AI app and it'll, and I was like, man, that's smart. What is so funny is that I was going to manually do that. I didn't even know AI could do that. But I was like, honestly, Mel, we should just like, Get yeah. the nuts and the bolts and just read that. I didn't even know that. Oh, I got to say this and then we can go because I got to go to dinner with daddy. Someone's asking about the HBCU tour. I want you guys to know me and Kevin 
are having a great time. Okay. The boys are having a good time as well, but Kevin and I are thoroughly enjoying ourselves. That's hilarious. Like, How was Bethune? Freaking fantastic. Yeah. It was a, it's a really small school, but um, like I said, I never go to, um, uh, I just, whatever your process is to schedule a tour is what I'm doing. I'm mm. not making, Hi, my name is Melissa Fredericks. I'm married to Kevin Fredericks. We are the Unstages. We're going to be at your facility. We just want to let you know that we're going to be there. I never, ever, ever do that. So yeah. if your process you can go online and fill out the thing and tell you're going to be there, I do the bare my my name. This is where I'm. I do the bare bare minimum. I don't need you to know nothing about me. Just do your regular job. Yeah. Um, somehow, some way, these people knew we were coming. So we get to the the campus immediately. We are, mind you, there's no one in the room. There's just the student ambassador. She buzzes us in. Six people come out. We have been awaiting your arrival. Do you mind oh. if we get a picture? We are oh. so excited. They were so sweet. I mean, that is just, sweet. they were really, 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 really sweet. So that was fantastic. We did more house today. I messed up. I didn't realize how many people went to FAMU. Oh. <laughs> didn't know was unaware. Yes. I, I chose schools that like I really wanted to go to and no shade, no disrespect to none of the fam viewers, the rattlesnakers that are all in my comments. Yes. I, just didn't, I just didn't know that I needed to go. Okay. So I yes. just went ahead and bypassed fam you went straight to Morehouse. Okay. Straight to Morehouse. And I messed up. So I'm gonna have to do that. Um, so yeah, we're yeah. Morehouse today. I got to edit the video. Morehouse was First of all, I had never, I realized that all the years you were at Spelman, I'd never been to Morehouse. Oh, really? We never, I guess we didn't have a reason to, really. Yeah, we never did. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I never did. So, my um, oh my God, really, really nice campus. Like, yep. it's really, really did nice. Did you guys go in the chapel? Yes. Oh, yeah. See, Martin Luther I'm, King, the statue and all that? Yeah. <laughs> like we, we absolutely like I had it was I I wanted to go to Morehouse so I was like oh my god yes tell me more yeah so that was great um North Carolina a t we are is on our list but to be honest I have called probably four or five times at this point my um travel agent has called once or twice they have yet to pick up the phone oh wow I, this is probably when I should have told somebody that like, yeah. I know. Uh, they have yet to pick up the phone. They have yet to answer an email. So we're going there tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sad about that. That is why. So is there a new school in, in North Carolina? Are you guys going to go? Oh, that's not uh, HBCU. Never mind. Which one? Uh, what's the big North Carolina school? The Tar Heels one. They they blue, yeah the blue the baby blue Tar Heel blue, yeah it is in Greensboro. There you go. Is it, it is. It's in Duke in North Carolina. Duke, I'm pretty I sure it's Duke. It's, but there, that's not an HBCU. That's where no, no, it is. No. Yeah, that's in Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so we'll do that. I have Grambling on the list, but I realized I scheduled it over Grambling. the course of the week. Yeah, so we'll see where that how that goes. Uh, Howard's on the list, and Texas Southern. Oh, nice, nice. You could have also went to well, that's probably Tennessee State is a is a good one too. Anyway, yeah, you know, I yeah, I want I went to the ones that like. The thing about it is because I planned it. It was the campuses I wanted to see. I, you wanted because to go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So these I wanted to do and see. You know what I'm saying? So did like, you say him too? No, Hampton's not on there. Oh, you should have did Hampton. Okay, it's fine. Cheerless. Cheerless, not yeah. mine. Sorry. I know, I, but Joe, listen, I still have Joe. I still yes, have Joe. Yes. Absolutely. So maybe we'll do part two and we have to hit these schools because listen, they're going to beat me up in these comments, okay? Oh, um. Uh. Okay, so anything else? That's we it? didn't go to South Carolina. Oh, you, it's right there. You I mean, I know we it. could see it, like literally I could yeah. see it. It just wasn't like, I really yeah. could have, like, literally it was right there. It just, 
And to be honest, we really didn't have the time to be completely honest. That tour was like two and a half hours. And then we came back and immediately had a shoot and you see it's 5.30 now and we're not dead. Um, Someone said, did Isaiah have any say in this? No. 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 You should go to an HBCU though. I don't even think Isaiah's gonna go to HBCU. Well. I met at the Angel show, Angel and Marcus's, um, is this going to cause an argument? Um, a woman came up to me, said she watches June and, uh, Jen and Juice, and she is going, oh, I forgot the school she said she's going to, but it was so lovely. She was like, you talk about Spelman, and I'm so excited because I'm going to an HBCU this fall, and I can't remember what school now, but I was really excited. I started following her because I'm like, yes, go live your very best life. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. College in general is like such a good time. You know, it's like, so Man. different than any other time in your life. It's the best. I want my boys to go so bad because I do believe it's like a once in a lifetime experience. Like sure. once you're once you age out of like that specific age, you, you gotta enter real life. But yeah, you got bills and carrying on. But like if you can still, I call it adulthood with training wheels, mm-hmm. where you're like own but you still have your parents very much there to like lean back on financially support you you know you're still in school like those type of things I just think it's such it's just such a unique time in your life that you should like fully take advantage of college is a good time and I went to a PWI PWI and I still think it was a really good time yeah yeah all right the whole entire experience all right enjoy lunch with daddy or dinner with daddy Daddy, yeah, he'll be there in like five minutes, actually. All right, you guys, thank you uh, so much. Uh, I will send this to Aubrey Mill. Um, but if you can upload, yeah, yeah, okay. Are the boys coming? Yeah, I made reservations for us all. All right, y'all, bye. Bye.